I'm a Mega Man fan, but I'm also Finnish, which means that for many years now, I've been a little frustrated with the way Capcom has handled the Mega Man series over here. And sure, in 2010, Capcom gave the big middle finger to all Mega Man fans with the great Mega Man Purge when they canceled not one, but three games all in one fell swoop. Now sure, with the Legacy Collections, Capcom has shown that they're willing to make up for their mistakes, eventually. Hell, I was stoked because Legacy Collection 2's release meant I could finally play Mega Man 8, and I loved it, thank you very much. But this doesn't change the fact that Capcom seems to have it in for fans of the Blue Bomber living in the Eurozone. So, here are five instances when Capcom screwed over European Mega Man fans. And for a change, these are listed in chronological order rather than the order of severity. May seem a bit odd, but it makes more sense, especially once we come to the last three items. On with the list! Number 1, Mega Man 6. Let's start with the least grievous of the crimes on this list. Now, even really hardcore Mega Man fans wouldn't necessarily consider Mega Man 6 to be a timeless classic from the series. I like the game, don't get me wrong, but it perhaps has a hard time standing out amongst the latter-day NES titles. For some fans, the game might as well not exist, but for European fans, that actually was the case, because Mega Man 6 never had an official release on the NES in Europe. Now, technically, Capcom isn't at fault here, because the Western release of the game wasn't handled by them. Instead, Capcom gave that honor to Nintendo themselves. That's right, Nintendo handled the North American release for Mega Man 6. And I suppose the big N decided it wasn't worth releasing the game in Europe on a platform, which at this point was already on its way out the door. And frankly, I kind of get where Nintendo was coming from. You see, this was still in an era when the EU looked like this, and the game releases generally took a while to make the rounds. Mega Man 6 was released in late 1993 in Japan, and the North American release happened in early 1994. Mega Man X had just been released for the Super Nintendo, and Mega Man 4 had only been released in Europe the year before. In fact, Mega Man 4 and 5 were pushed out the same year in North America. In other words, Nintendo probably didn't see much sense in pushing out another NES Mega Man when there was already a brand new one on the SNES. Still, you could argue that Capcom must have not cared for the game too much to basically just dump it on Nintendo's doorstep like that. But of course, Mega Man 6 would eventually be re-released digitally two decades later. Number 2, Mega Man NT Warrior. You might have heard that, aside a potential movie, there's also a new Mega Man cartoon coming out next year. The Blue Bomber is no stranger to the world of animation, having been a regular on Captain and the Game Master, and having his own TV series produced by Ruby Spears in the mid-90s. Now, I did see Captain N growing up, but the USA Network sponsored Ruby Spears dealio dodged TV screens in my home country, though it did get released in a number of European countries, so at least some European Mega Man fans got to enjoy Mega yelling PLASMA POWER. But did you know that between the Ruby Spears series and now, there was in fact another Mega Man TV cartoon. That was NT Warrior, based somewhat loosely on the Battle Network series on the Game Boy Advance and DS. While I was never the biggest fan of the series, my mind could have been changed if I had been able to watch this series, but alas, very few European Mega Man fans had the pleasure. Now again, this one wasn't strictly Capcom's fault, as the Western distribution rights for both the show and the manga series based off it were held by Viz Media. And apparently out of sheer ignorance over the popularity of the series, or just out of good old laziness, only released Mega Man NT Warrior on one European channel. The fucking British Jetix channel. So unless you had paid cable access to it, you were shit out of luck in actually seeing it. By all accounts, the show was actually pretty good, spawning a second season. Now again, this isn't that big of a crime, considering that I wasn't that big of a Battle Network fan, but you have to wonder, were this just out of their tiny minds, thinking that European countries, well known for their big appetites for anime, wouldn't have loved one starring everyone's favorite Blue Bomber? Number 3, Mega Man Anniversary Collection. By far the biggest kicks in the teeth that ever happened to me as a Mega Man fan happened around the mid-2000s. Put yourself in my shoes. A few years ago, I discovered a wonderful little website called Mega Man Homepage. I, I discovered that after the NES days, the Mega Man series was still alive and kicking with new games appearing all the time. 
I start to rediscover my love for the series through emulators, and then the big news comes. Mega Man Anniversary Collection for the GameCube. Featuring all eight main installments of the series, which had come out at the time, including number eight, which I had not played yet. I was stoked. Now, MMHB being an American side, I waited patiently for the thing to come out soon after the North American release. In June 2004, it came out. And then I waited, and waited, and waited. I kept checking Capcom's European homepage, I kept checking Nintendo's Finnish homepage, but found no news whatsoever about Anniversary Collection being released. Wait a couple of more years, and the Wii was already out. There was never a European release for Mega Man Anniversary Collection. This was inexcusable. For one thing, I only owned one Mega Man game as a physical copy, and I would have been happy as a pig in shit to be able to play the official Mega Man games on a Nintendo system. This incident is what soured my relationship with Capcom, and with a few more missteps, such as Street Fighter 4 being a piece of shit and the 2010 Mega Man Purge, you can see why my love for the company hit an all-time low. But to their credit, they did try to make up for the mistake. Number 4, the Wii Virtual Console releases. Now, I love the Wii just as a console in general, but the main thing it had, and still sort of does have over the competition, is that it had the single most awesome library of retro games already on release. I got to experience a lot of Mega Drive titles, I even discovered my love for the TurboGrafx-16. They could have had more Nintendo 64 titles there, but more to the point, Having classic NES titles, both those released and not released in Europe, seemed to mean one thing. I was one step closer to getting the official Mega Man titles for a Nintendo system. Hell, Mega Man 1 was already out on Virtual Console when I got my Wii, so I thought it'd be only a matter of time before we had the games 2 through 6, as well as the SNES Mega Man games on it. I even secretly hoped Mega Man 8 was going to make it. But then, Mega Man 3 didn't come out on the Virtual Console until November of 2008, nearly a year after Mega Man 2. This was an ominous sign. Mega Man 4 finally came out on the Virtual Console in 20 fucking 10. Almost two years later, Mega Man 5 and X finally hit the Virtual Console in 2012, by which point the Wii U was already coming out. I couldn't imagine what Capcom was thinking. What in God's name possessed them to wait that long to push out each individual release? I know it couldn't be a technical issue, and yes, the releases were just as sluggish in the North American Wii Shop, but remember, with one major exception, Europe never got the fucking anniversary collection. It took Capcom a painstaking six years to release six Mega Man games on the fucking Wii, the best-selling system of its generation. And I'm being fair, I wasn't expecting them to just poop them out all at once, I was expecting maybe a two or three month long gap between each release, but not a fucking two year gap with no releases whatsoever. Or fuck, why not just release them all together and push a bundle deal? They would have made a fucking mint, especially after they fucked everyone over in 2010. European Nintendo fans had to wait for the fucking Wii U before Mega Man 6 and 7, as well as the 3X titles for the SNES, were finally released. And don't get me wrong, I was glad when they were released. On top of which, Capcom's technically now made up for not releasing the Anniversary Collection with the two Legacy Collections. It only took them 13 fucking years. But ooh, wait, if you thought Capcom was exclusively boning the Europeans on Nintendo's platform, you ain't seen nothing yet. And number five, the PlayStation Network releases. Just to rub extra salt on the wounds, there apparently was a Mega Man X collection released for the GameCube and PlayStation 2 in North America back in 2006. And I'm glad I only found out about it while researching for this video, because I think my brain would have exploded otherwise. Despite mixed critical reception, the 3X games on the PlayStation were actually pretty well received by fans in general. And I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't curious to try them out. So imagine my pleasure of finding out that Capcom was planning on re-releasing X4 through 6 on the PlayStation Network back in 2014. But oh no! What's this? Yep. 
come fucking jilted the Europeans again by only releasing these games in the Japanese and American PlayStation stores. Years of disappointment help make your skin thick, but year in, year out, Capcom is still a dick. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.